first got it when he was six, didn't know any tricks. Matter of fact, first time he got on it, he slipped, landed on his hip and busted his lip. For a week, he had to talk with a list like this. Now we can end the story right. So, um, in the next slide, okay, I'm going to go over the formula for um, our Riemann sums. So what you'll see is something like S sub N comma M, and that's going to equal the sum. So this is the symbol for sum as I um, goes from one to capital N and the sum from J equals one to capital M. Um, and I'll let you know what all this notation means because it does look confusing, I admit. Um, and this is F evaluated at P I J um, and then delta X I and delta Y J. Okay, so yes, this does look intimidating, but I'll break down what all the variables mean. So S just means your sum, your Riemann sums. Um, and N is the number of sub intervals, intervals um, of X, okay? Uh, M, on the other hand, as you could probably guess, is the number of, su of sub intervals, intervals of Y, okay? So if they give you three here and two there, then you'd know that you have to divide um, your X interval into three different um, sub intervals and so on. Um, okay, and these both mean sum of, um, it's just a fancy way to write it. So that just means sum of, so sum means adding, right? Adding stuff. Um, okay, and now moving on to this part, the F of PIJ. So these uh, are basically when you're given the F of XY, um, you're gonna be given this function, right? And then at each of those points, the midpoint or the upper left corner or whatever um, you have to do, the this, this F of PIJ, um, PIJ is just like the points that you choose within those rectangles. This represents the value of um, f of x comma y at a given point in your small rectangle. In your small rectangle. The ones that we form, right, by dividing the big rectangle. Okay. And now we're left with these two at the end here. So I'm going to say that delta x sub i. So anytime you see delta, this triangle here, that just means change in. Um, that's what it's commonly used for in math. So that means change in x. Um, and then i here, that's just because, I think. I, don't, I really don't want, know why it's there. But um, yeah. So what this is, uh, how you would calculate that is b minus a. So this is the end point of your interval to the begin minus the start point divided by capital N, okay, which is your number of sub intervals. And then uh, delta Y, J, on the other hand, is going to be D minus C over capital M, okay? All right, so keep all of this in mind, and we're going to try to tackle an example. All right, so let's say we're given the following problem, double integral over D, our domain, of X, Y, and then DA, all right? So we're going to approximate this using Riemann sums, um, and it's the problem also gives this. So this is a given, let D equal one to four times one to three. Okay, so this will all be given, and then uh, they'll tell us calculate, calculate um, S sub 3 comma 2 using upper left, upper left um, sample points. Okay, so what we have here, let's look at our given information. So we're calculating the double integral, which is what I've been talking about um, and introducing. We're given the domain here and the first um, set or brackets that corresponds to x so x will go from 1 to 4 and this second set here corresponds to y so y goes from 1 to 3 okay um, and this s sub 3 comma 2 
um, we figure out that n equals 3 and capital M equals 2, all right? Uh, oh, this is also going back. This is 1 is like A, this is like B, this is like C, and that is like D. Um, those are the variables that I've been using so far. And we're also given upper left sample points. So what I would suggest for um, Riemann sums like this is to draw out what it looks like on the xy plane. So here we have our x and y, and um, so let's draw, so I've dropped a 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 on x, and then 1, 2, 3 on y, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so this is what our big rectangular box looks like. If I can draw some straight lines here. Okay, something like that, right? Because x goes from 1 to 4, and y goes from 1 to 3. And now, um, as we see, we can slice the x, um, or slice the x interval up into three smaller ones. So that's actually convenient, because then we get that it falls on the whole numbers. So that's good. See how we have three little intervals here? So this is one little interval, and then we have another one, and another one. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing on y, and that works out perfectly. And we're going to slice it at 2 here. So see how we have one subinterval and two right there. Okay, I drew that line too long. Hold on. Right there. Okay. Um, all right, so this might be a little confusing with the, all the lines and stuff, but I'll darken our big rectangle. Um, so we're looking at this one here, and now it's sliced into six little rectangles. Okay, so now we're going to use the upper left sample points. So now you just take, look at, let's look at the top left uh, rectangle and draw a dot at the upper left point. So right here. Let's look at this one and now the dot would be there. And here, here, and then there and there. Okay, so um, now what we're going to do, we have a lot of the information already and we know that our f of x comma y equals xy, as is given in the problem, right? Um, we also need our delta xi. So delta xi equals b minus a, b minus a over capital N, all right? So b is 4, so 4 minus 1, 4 minus 1 over 3 equals 3 over 3, which is just 1, so that's good. And then our delta y, j, is d minus c, so 3 minus 1. Uh, okay, so d minus c over capital M. So that's 3 minus 1 over capital M, which is 2. And that also equals 1. So what we're going to have when we um, plug it in the formula, well, okay, I'll plug it in the formula on the next page um, so that I have enough room to write it out. All right, so this is our formula here. So we have our um, double integral evaluated over the domain of xy uh, dA. So this is going to be about, by the Riemann sums, and I'll write it out formally here. So then that goes from 1, i goes from 1 to 3, um, and j goes from 1 to 2. And then we have our f of pij, and PIJ, you can just kind of think of that as your sample point, sample point, okay? And there's only one listed here because we're going to evaluate it at each sample point and then add them up. This just means add everything up. Add um, everything. <laughs> add everything. Okay. And then our delta XI and delta YJ. All right, so this is how we're going to execute it, is um, we have our delta xi and delta yj. So those were each one, right? We evaluated each of those to be um, the value of one. So this is just one. So that doesn't really matter, actually. Um, so we could even put the one in front. And then we have to add up all of our f of xy's evaluated at each of our sample points. And in this case, we're going to have six um, different values because we had six different sample points, right, at the upper left corners. So, um, ooh, okay. So I'm actually going to 
sketch out the graph again so you guys can see um, what it looked like. All right, so bear with me here. I'm just kind of estimating. Okay, so this is vertical lines are very hard <laughs> when you can't turn a paper. Okay, that was actually pretty good. So this is one, two, three, four, and then this is one, two, three, and here's our the rectangle we are concerned with um, right here. Okay, there we go. So here's our sample points. They're on the upper left corners of the small rectangles. So the first one, um, we have the point 1, 3, right? So we're going to evaluate F at 1, 3. And then we're going to add it to, because we're adding everything. Uh, and then we'll do the next one, 1, 2. So F of 1, comma 2. And then let's move on to the next one, 2, 3. And these can go in any order since we're just adding them, right? 2, 3, and then we have 2, 2, <laughs> 2, 2, um, and then we have plus, and then there's 3, 3, f of 3, 3, and our last point here is 3, 2, so f of 3, 2, okay? So then at this point, now we just plug in, so this is our, in each of these, um, that's our x and that's our y, and you just plug it into the formula. So, and this one is just kind of sitting there in front. So we'll just uh, make it invisible in the next step. So f of 1, 3 is going to be 1, x times y, 1 times 3, plus, and we do the same thing for all of them, 1 times 2, plus 2 times 3, plus 2 times 2. And you're not going to do this in every single um, Riemann sums calculation. I'm just do multiplying the two numbers just because that's what our formula says to do, OK? If we had something like x plus y, then I would do like 1 plus 3 in parentheses plus 1 plus 2 in parentheses and then etc. But we don't have that. We have x times y. And then continuing here, plus 3 times 2. OK. And then um, what our final answer ends up being is 30, I believe. <laughs> That's what I calculated. So. Okay, so that's how you do a Riemann sums um, approximation. Okay, so now on to the next topic.